Good morning. Today is Sunday the 8th of May and it's the fourth Sunday in Eastertide. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. Paul and Barnabas carried on from Perga till they reached Antioch in Pisidia. Here they went to synagogue on the Sabbath and took their seats. When the meeting broke up, many Jews and devout converts joined Paul and Barnabas, and in their talks with them, Paul and Barnabas urged them to remain faithful to the grace God had given them. The next Sabbath, almost the whole town assembled to hear the word of God. When they saw the crowds, the Jews, prompted by jealousy, used blasphemies and contradicted everything Paul said. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke up boldly. We had to proclaim the word of God to you first, but since you have rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, we must turn to the pagans. For this is what the Lord commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations, so that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. It made the pagans very happy to hear this, and they thanked the Lord for his message. All who were destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread throughout the whole countryside. But the Jews worked upon some of the devout women of the upper classes and the leading men of the city, and persuaded them to turn against Paul and Barnabas and expel them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in defiance and went off to Iconium. But the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Second reading is from the Apocalypse, chapter 7. I, John, saw a huge number, impossible to count, of people from every nation, race, tribe and language. They were standing in front of the throne and in front of the Lamb, dressed in white robes and holding palms in their hands. One of the elders said, These are the people who have been through the great persecution, and because they have washed their robes white again in the blood of the Lamb, they now stand in front of God's throne and serve Him day and night in His sanctuary. And the one who sits on the throne will spread His tent over them. They will never hungry, hunger or thirst again. Neither the sun nor scorching wind will ever plague them, because the Lamb who is at the throne will be their shepherd and will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. <clears throat> the Word of the Lord. The Gospel of the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Jesus said, The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They will never be lost, and no one will ever steal them from me. The Father who gave them to me is greater than anyone, and no one can steal from the Father. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is commonly known as Good Shepherd Sunday, and it celebrates Jesus as the Good Shepherd. The Gospel reading precisely says that phrase, um, the shepherd belongs to me and listen to them. I know them and they follow me. Um, and I will like, be given to me to care for. Jesus sees himself as the good shepherd. He presents himself as the good shepherd. Somebody who leads, somebody who can be trusted, somebody who doesn't want any harm to come to any of the people following him. And he's our good shepherd. On this Sunday we pledge ourselves as, shall we say, a loyal sheep. I know in English to be called a sheep is sometimes a derogatory term. It means somebody who doesn't think for themselves and just follows what the crowd does. I think it's important that we combine both aspects of this. Yes, we are part of the crowd, but I think also we should do it individually, that we confirm ourselves as we want to be disciples of Jesus. We want to follow him. And therefore we choose in a knowing, shall we say, focused and definite way, we choose to be sheep, the sheep of Jesus, members of his flock, because we belong to the church 
and we want the protection of the church. Of course, we see in the first readings, first of all, the spread of the gospel, um, the preaching in Perga, and eventually Peter and Barnabas get thrown out, Paul and Barnabas being pardon, uh, because the people wouldn't accept. Um, and you can hear the, the, all the people of the town and the, what are they called, the high class ladies, all being persuaded to turn against uh, Paul and Barnabas. And they, they walk away, dusting their feet, dusting their feet from the dust of the town. As Jesus said, if your word isn't accepted, move on, don't stay, just move on. And that's what they did. So there were clearly many places that did accept the teaching and there perhaps many places that didn't accept their teaching and Paul just carried on, carried on, always preaching wherever he went. He faced many difficulties and so did his followers and the second reading from the book of the Apocalypse is precisely a reading to give encouragement, to give recognition that to be a follower of Christ does lead to difficulties and that this reading, the whole apocalypse is there in order to encourage those who are undergoing persecution, those going through difficult times. Um, and again, the, the promise of care is there. This great number of people, uh, because the Lamb who's on the throne will be their shepherd and will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. It's part of God's care for us that yes, we will have difficulties as Christians, but he's our shepherd, he will lead us the right way, and he will care for us, wiping tears from our eyes. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, glorify us, Lord, with the glory of Christ. Let us pray to the Father, the all-powerful God, who raised up Jesus, our Prince and our Saviour. Glorify us, Lord, with the glory of Christ. Father, you brought your beloved Son from the darkness of death to the light of glory. Let us enter into the regions of your own wonderful light. Glorify us, Lord, with the glory of Christ. You saved us through faith in Jesus Christ. Help us to live today in the grace of our baptism. Glorify us, Lord, with the glory of Christ. You have told us to seek the things that are in heaven. Enable us to resist the attraction of sin. Glorify us, Lord, with the glory of Christ. Reveal the riches of our hidden life in Christ, that men may see the signs of the new heaven and the new earth. Glorify us, Lord, with the glory of Christ. And we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, bring us to the joy of your heavenly city, so that we, your little flock, may follow where Christ our Good Shepherd has gone before us by the power of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good Sunday, have a good week. So all each week is a new week in God's God's kingdom. All the best.